What is up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be looking at this really cool thing I only just learned about. It's basically adding in blocks into your scene and as you can see at the bottom I can switch between different blocks, different tiles. I haven't actually set up the last three here but I'll show you how you can do that in this video. So without further ado let's get started. Okay guys, I'm going to start a new Unity project. I'm just going to call it Build World Builder. I don't even know what you'd call this feature, to be honest. I don't know what we're even calling it. No idea. Maybe World Tile Map Building System. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, people, we have a new Unity instance loaded up. Now, Google, go away. Why does Google always get involved when it's not wanted? Jesus. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a few different objects to our scene. So I have a tile set somewhere. I'm not going to lie. I don't actually know where. This one here, I'm just going to drop it in here. Um, you can use any tile set or any tile you like. Uh, I'm just going to click none on that. I'm just going to set this up as I would any other tile maps. 16, multiple, and then I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to click Sprite Editor and I'm going to slice this by grid cell. It'll be 16 by 16. Click Slice. Then I'm just going to hit Apply. So now we have a bunch of different tiles or sprites we can use. Now we've got that, I need to set up a couple of things. We need a new game object. I'm going to call this the Build Manager. Um, that's all that really needs, it's just Build Manager. We're going to add a script to this later. But we need to set up a tile palette first. So I'm just going to create a new tile palette. I'm just going to call this palette. There's <laughs> nothing else you really can call it, can you? This, I just have one singular palette in my game. That's all I want. I'll create a new folder for this because it gets messy. Uh, palettes. Uh, click choose. And that should have created my palette. It doesn't get messy. I thought that was something different. I'm on about this bit. So now if I drag these in here, it's going to ask me to create some new tiles. So I'm just going to say tiles. And then I'm just going to choose. So what I just did there is I dragged my sprites from my platform tile set one over onto my uh, palettes I've just created. And then that gets you this. Just to let you know, if you want to know how you open up the tile palette, you go up to window. Uh, you are, no, 2D tile palette. Click that and then you can dock it wherever you like. So normally you get it like, well, kind of like this. Uh, I'm just going to dock it back down here. Um, and then we've got our tile set all set up. So now we have some tiles created and this is the main thing we needed. I'm just going to drop in a quick base here. Uh, we need to, can I have the paintbrush? Hello. Oh, yeah. Next step, we need to actually add in a 2D tile map where we're going to, well, that it could just be called tile map for now. Um, and we're just going to add in a or tile map collider 2d um, and also a composite collider which gives give us a rigid body which we need to set to kinematic um, and this will be set to use composite so now we should be able to draw there we go two random platforms are just added for uh, fun um, and now we've got this so now what we want to do is we want to head over to our build manager add a new script and call it you probably guessed it, build manager. I'm going to create this script and then we're going to open it up in Visual Studio. So I'm just going to double click this. Okay, now we have opened this up inside of uh, Visual Studio. I'm just going to remove that, remove that. And now we're going to set up a few things. I'm going to set up a public tile map. Oh, we actually need to include the unity.tilemaps. Um, namespace we're going to create a tile map call it tile map so this will be the tile map we use to draw on time map imagine if that was a thing we're going to time map to the nexus i don't know i'm just a nerd sorry um tile map we're then going to create a public tile array called tiles and this is where we'll add all the tiles we want to be able to draw we're then going to create a public oh list of game objects we could probably do this as certain guys, but for now we'll just do this. We'll just call it UI tiles. So this will be the tiles we see at the bottom. We need a list of those so we can access them. We're then going to create a public integer called selected tile, which we're going to set to zero by default. 
And finally, we need a public transform of tile grid UI. Um, so let me explain this. So tile map is obviously to render tiles. We actually need up here as well dot UI in our namespace. So the tile map is the tile map we're going to use to draw on. The tiles is going to be a list of tiles we can draw. The list of UI tiles is going to be the tiles we create dynamically from the tiles, which we're going to add to our tile grid UI. And the selected tile is the current tile we have access to. Now, if we go down to, we want to create a start method. And what we're going to do is say int i, which is going to be our, um, well, our integer, um, so, or our index for our for each loop we're about to do. So we're going to say for each tile, tile in tiles. And I'll say that three times fast. Um, so, so we're getting this tiles array up here, and we're just going to loop through them to create basically our UI. So what we're going to say it's game object UI tile. And we're going to set this equal to a new game object. Um, and we're just going to call this UI tile. We're then going to say UI tile uh, dot transform dot parent. And we've got to set it to the UI tiles. Um, not UI tile, sorry, the tile grid UI, um, which will basically parent it to that or child it to that. Yep. We're going to say UI tile dot transform dot local scale and we're going to set it to a new vector three. The reason we're doing this, we're just going to reset back to one F. The reason we do this is for some reason when I parent it to tile grid UI, it sometimes messes up and it's a different size and they overlap each other and it looks weird. So we're just going to set it back to default in case that does happen. We're going to set the image. So we're going to create a new UI image. So we're going to say UI image is equal to UI tile dot add component UI image. Oh, sorry, just image. We're then going to basically say the UI image dot sprite is equal to the tile dot sprite. So every tile has its own sprite by default, and we're just going to set this sprite to equal the same as that. We're then going to say set the color of this sprite. So what we want to do is say color, and we're going to call it image color or tile color. We're going to set this to UI image dot color. So we're going to grab the color off the UI image where it currently is. We're then just going to get the um, tile color alpha and we're going to set it equal to 0 0.5. So it's only half its normal opacity. So this means it's not selected. We then want to say if I is equal to selected tile, we're then going to say image color, or no, sorry, tile color is equal to one. So we're going to, we're basically going to say, oh, sorry, dot A, because we want to get its alpha and set it to one. What we're saying here, so if it's selected, then it's going to be full opacity, else it's only going to be half. At the bottom of this, we also need to say I plus plus, so we actually iterate through this. We then want to say UI image dot color it's equal to tile color. So we're now actually setting the tile color. Finally, what all we want to do is go to our UI. Is it UI tiles? That's it. So we created a UI tiles um, list and we just want to add the UI tile to that list. So let's just move that. And so now this is going to build basically our UI at the bottom. Now let's quickly go back to our editor and let's set some of this up so we're not just writing code for the whole video. Um, let's right click and create a new canvas. So UI and I'm just going to click panel. If we zoom out here, you'll see the panel. I'm just going to change the canvas to scale with screen size. I'm going to say 1920 by 1080. Um, and then I'm going to go back to the panel. I'm going to select this and I'm going to set it to the bottom. So if you hold Alt and Shift, you can click here and it will snap to the bottom. I'm going to give it a width of 600 by 100. On the panel, I'm going to rename this to um, Tile UI Grid. I'm then going to add a Layout Grid. Grid Layout Group, shall I say. And then I'm going to select the Child Alignment 
to middle center, the padding or the cell size to 80 by 80 and the spacing to be 10 and 10. So 20 and 20. That should be right. So what we're doing here, we've basically created a grid. So now if we just add random images to this, UI images, and we duplicate, 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 you can see they all become in this nice grid. And now we have this nice grid of images that are visible on the, um, well, in the grid. So that's what we're using our tiles for. Let's delete that. So now we need to go back to our build manager and drag this tile UI grid on here. Now we need to also drag in some tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the inspector at the top right. This means if I click on a different area, you see nothing changed on the right. This means we can go down into our tiles. I'm going to select from zero to five, and I'm just going to drag these tiles inside of our tiles. I'm then going to hit play, and we should be able, oh, we need to set the tile map. But as you can see at the bottom now, now we have these different tiles with the selected one, which is number zero, um, available. But before we do that, before we do anything else, we now need to set up our tile map. So let's drag our tile map into our tile map um, variable. And that is it. So now we've got our UI displaying. That's good. But we now need to kind of switch our UI to, to be able to select different ones. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's create an update method where we'll set a few switching um, keys. So I'm only going to be using keys one to six. That's why I only have six tiles. If you want to use more, then you might want to look at a more dynamic system where you can type a number one, two up to nine or something. But for now, we're just going to say if input dot get key down. And basically, we're just going to get the key code of alpha one. And that's basically just means number one on the keyboard in the top row. We're then going to say selected tile is equal to zero. We're then going to duplicate this. Um, actually, we're also going to call a function called render UI tiles. I'm then going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. We could do an else if actually, let's do else if. And then we're going to get an else if. I'm going to copy this and change this to number two. And now we can copy this and paste this six times. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to change this to one, two, three, four, five, and six. And literally, it's going to be the same thing, which we probably could have created a function for to care for this whole thing. But we're just going to set this equal to one, two, three, four. And five. So this selected tile references the num the tile in the tiles list, the number in the tiles list. So we now want to go render UI tile tiles. Create this as a void. So render UI tiles. And what we're going to do in here is basically a similar thing to what we did up here. So we're just going to create another int i equal to zero. We're going to say for each game object tile in UI tiles. So the list we created this time, we're going to say image UI I image or UI image. It's equal to tile dot get component image. So what we're saying here is we're saying inside of our UI tiled list where we add it when we start. So these UI tiles, we're going to loop through them all. Um, and for each one, we're going to get the game object. And then we're going to use this to get the image, which we've we added when we created them. We're then going to create a new color. We're going to call tile color. Seller equal to UI image dot color. And then we're just basically going to say the same thing we did here down here. So we're just going to redo this. And then at the bottom, we just want to say I plus plus. So we're iterating through our index. So now if we hit save, we go back and we hit play. 
I now press 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, you can see they highlight differently at the bottom of the screen. So now we can select any one we want. That's good, but now we actually need to place them. And this is actually a lot easier than most people think. It's actually only three lines of code. Well, about four if you count the end bracket too. Um, so we're going to create a new if statement. I'm going to say if input dot get mouse button down and we're going to set it to zero. So if we press the, the uh, left mouse button, we're basically going to say factor three, or oh, factor three, and we'll call this position. It's equal to camera dot main dot screen to world point. We're going to say input dot mouse position. So what I just said here is we're going to set a position which is equal to um, the mouse position, but we're going to convert the mouse position to world point. So it's normally in pick screen pixels. This is going to change it to coordinates in our world. And then what we're going to say is tile map. So the tile map we created, we're going to say set tile. And then we're going to say tile map again. And this time we're going to say world to cell. Why is this not? I created a tile map. That time map. I called it time map again. Why do I keep calling things the wrong thing? So tile map dot tile map dot set tile. And then in here we're going to pass through the position. And then we're going to also give it the tile. So we're going to say tiles. And then we're going to say selected tile. And then let's end this. So up here we have our tile list. So what we're doing here is before all we're doing is finding where, what cell we're in with our cursor. So what world cell are we in or tile map cell when we click with our cursor. So that's where we're getting the mouse position and passing it through. We're then setting the tiles. The Well, we're getting the tile, which is equal to the selected tile. So the index of the selected tile. And that's what we do here. And then we're placing it down. So let's hit save. Let's go back. Let's hit play. And here you go. So if I click now, nothing works. Um, we have an error. Tile map of Bill Manager has not yet been assigned. Because we changed the name, we need to reset our tile map. So we just need to drag in our tile map. Save. And now if we hit play. You should see as I click, we place a tile which we select. If I now swap to number two, you can see I can select any tile I currently want to place. So look, we can just swap through and keep going. Now, one issue is you can also replace them by just clicking on top. This won't duplicate anything. It just replaces the tile which, which was originally there. Now, one issue with this is obviously it's not going to work very well because we can't delete them. So why if we make a mistake? Now what we want to do is we want to go back. Again, it's the exact same line of code. We're just changing the zero for one. So it's our right mouse click and we're setting from tile to tile to null. So all we're doing is setting the tile we right click on and deleting it and setting it equal to null. So now if we click play, we can even delete the ones we've already placed by right clicking. We can draw new ones in and we can right click to delete them. There you go. So we can now delete and add tiles which we choose at the bottom. So this can make for a really cool mechanic. Let's say if you've got a player you're running around the world and you want to basically, so if we turn gizmos on now and I click on this tile map, or sorry, go back here and we scroll down, we should be able to see it does have a box close. Oh, our thing's locked again. So it does have a box collide around it, which was allows us to see, uh, be able to run and jump onto these platforms we create, uh, which is awesome. So basically you can create these platforms now, place them down and just basically make whole new worlds. You can create a really cool game concept from this. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that like button. That's the same thing, Tyler. I keep saying that. Hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, share with all your friends, and peace out. Keep muddy.